Today from the vault, rather than looking at a particular firearm, we're going to look at a particular cartridge. In this case, the 44 Magnum. Now the 44 Magnum reminds me a lot of the 30 6 in the rifle world. It's a great cartridge, does everything you need it to do, and nobody really thinks it's sexy anymore. It's been around for so long and people take it for granted, and yet it really is a great cartridge. So let's take a look at why. Um, you know, a long time ago, guys like Elmer Keith were trying to develop more powerful loads for handguns, and he blew up more than one 45 Long Colt trying to do that. When he switched to the 44 Special, he found he could pack more powder in and get better velocities with heavy bullets, but he still wasn't quite where he wanted to be. So around about the 1950s, Elmer Keith got Remington and Smith & Wesson to work together on a 44 Magnum project. Remington agreed to make the ammunition, Smith & Wesson was going to come up with a revolver that would handle it. And somewhere in this mix, Ruger got wind of the project, and they came out with their single action version of their six gun within a couple of weeks of Smith & Wesson introducing their gun. So it was a pretty big deal in its day, and everybody wanted to have one. Now the 357 had been around a long time, and there is quite a bit of difference between a 357 Magnum and a 44 Magnum. You can tell just by looking at the fronts there that one's gonna hit a whole lot harder than the other. The 44 Special is nothing but a shorter 44 Magnum, or conversely, the 44 Magnum's a length in 44 Special. That's to keep you from putting high pressure 44 mag loads into an old Smith & Wesson or some other 44 revolver that just might accept a 44 Special case because the steels used way back then before the war were fairly soft, they weren't always heat treated, and it could blow a gun apart, what would be a normal load for these guns. So the 44 Magnum was off to a roaring start, and then the 1960s came along, Clint Eastwood was Dirty Harry. Suddenly you couldn't buy a 44 Magnum anywhere, they all vanished off the shelves. The cartridge never looked back since then, and it's been with us so long that now we kind of forget it's there. But if you look in the catalogs and online, you'll find almost everybody chambers something in 44 Magnum because it's still outselling a bunch of other calibers. When you look at handguns, here's the classic. The Model 29 Smith & Wesson. This is what everybody thinks of first normally when you're talking about 44 Magnum. However, right up there with it is the great Ruger Blackhawk or the Super Blackhawk. They're made in two different configurations. Ruger's come out with a bunch of 44 Magnum revolvers. Their double action is the Red Hawk. This is a massive tank of a 44 Magnum. You can shoot maximum loads in this all day long and it doesn't hurt it a bit. The early Smith & Wessons were a little daintier and you could actually throw one out of time fairly quickly with hot loads, you know, a steady diet. But now with the new metallurgy and the Smith & Wesson endurance package that keeps the parts frozen in place once you have the trigger pulled, these guns will hold up to a lot of heavy loads, probably more than you'd want to load and shoot. They also make them in different configurations, different barrel lengths. Uh, this stainless 629, great option for an outdoors guy. Got some G10 grips on here. This thing's pretty impervious to weather. Be a nice gun for Alaska or the Everglades, something like that. This full underlug 629 with a six and a half inch barrel, great deer hunting gun. This extra weight up here really cuts down on the recoil. Very, very comfortable gun to shoot, even with full loads. As far as handguns go, the 44 Magnum's been chambered in all of these revolvers, plus a few others, some Italian copies. Taurus makes a good 44 Magnum. And there's an auto loader or two available. The Desert Eagle is available in 44 Magnum, has been for quite some time. Big heavy gun, great range gun. I don't know how long I'd want to carry one out in the wilderness, but boy, they're pleasant to shoot. Gas operated gun with all that weight. 44 Magnum feels like you're shooting a nine millimeter. It's beautiful. Now another aspect of the 44 Magnum is it's a fantastic rifle round. Like this 44 Magnum Henry here, will shoot 44 Magnums and 44 Specials. Henry's not the only one in the game though. Uh, Winchester's made guns for this in their 94 platform. Also the 92 Winchester is currently available, I believe, in 44 Magnum. Another big player in the 44 Magnum carbine market is Ruger. Now long ago they came out with their Deerstalker autoloader, uh, a little M1 carbine type uh, 
platform. I wish I had one here to show you because they're cute. They loaded through the bottom, almost like a Remington 1100 or something. Really neat gun, very popular. Now they have the Deerfield, which loads through a rotary magazine you insert through the bottom, kind of like a 1022. Again, it has that same M1 carbine look and feel and about that size. Very handy in the woods. Excellent guns, easy to put optics on them. And in addition to that, they have a bolt gun. If you don't like automatics, they have the 7744, which loads through a rotary magazine. Uh, it's a lot like their 7722 series. Not a very big gun, very handy, and it's available in stainless or blued. Perfect hunting vehicles. Now, a lot of people, when they think of a 44 Magnum carbine, they think of Marlins, because Marlin has had the 1894 in that caliber almost since the get-go. And that is a great gun. They're wonderfully made, they cycle smoothly, everything you could ask for. Browning also came out with the 92 for a while, the, a copy of the 92 Winchester in 44 Magnum. So there have been a lot of really great guns offered in this cartridge. There's more types of ammo that you can shake a stick at, so whether you need a self-defense load, a plinking load, a hunting load, they make it. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of ammo available, and I could only find half of what we normally carry because we're sold out of a lot of it. 44 Magnum ammo seems to move fast. So that, that's why I wanted to do this segment, because a lot of people are buying it and shooting it, but there's still not a lot of talk or excitement about it, and it's a great cartridge, just like the 30-06. So if you're about to get into handgun hunting, or if you've got a state like Iowa that uses straight wall cartridges in their carbines for deer hunting, Take a good look at the 44 Magnum. It's easy to reload. It's pretty economical to shoot. The guns are well built. You can't go wrong. So that's it from the vault today, the 44 Magnum. So if you have a cartridge or a firearm you'd like us to present, leave us a comment below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.